everyone, Richard Carlton here. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker Training. It is Monday here, but we're mostly all set up and going. So today is an exciting day with the uh, FileMaker community because we're always doing new and cool things every day. Today is day one. I'm going to hit the button. Where's the button? Right there. This is the button of the upcoming broadcast schedule. We can look, zoom in this a little bit. So today is day one. I got Jonathan Ray here and Jacob Taylor. We're going to be talking about FileMaker security, kind of the basics. So we're, it's like a basic to kind of more intermediate, advanced conversation over the next three days. Because people are like, ah, oh, you know, because we have new people come in, other people watching the videos. And they want to know about security. And so we haven't really talked about this in a serious way. We haven't really talked about security seriously since... June of last year, so over a year ago. So, and that was kind of on a semi related topic. So, we're going to kind of dive in at the basic level. What I was doing is I was looking at Claris's training because, you know, I wanted to make sure that I covered all the things that, that Claris, the Claris Academy of Awesome Training had. And I suddenly realized they don't really cover security in their, their training, right? If you want any information about security, it's in the help. So, we'll cover that. So, then tomorrow, today is day one basics. Tomorrow is a little more advanced. The exact topics are somewhat fungible or squishy. We can adjust them, uh, trade them around as, as appropriate. Uh, but tomorrow is theoretically more extended privilege sets, more advanced concepts. And then is Larry here? Is Larry here? Is Larry here? Larry is not here. Okay, so a lot of people want to know about the certification test. So it's kind of funny because Larry was asking me for hot tips on the certification test. And there's a lot of the content today that is testable that is on the test. There's some of it that's not on the test. Let's talk about how you can support the channel. How can you support the channel when we're giving all this stuff, free stuff away? You come to fmtrain.tv. The live tab is here. Go to the bundles button. Purchase one of the bundles. We greatly appreciate it, right? We have a video only training bundle here. We also have a complete uh, learning subscription right here. This is uh, FileMaker Pro. All of our uh, paid uh, products. You can get all our paid products, all our training, and a full copy of FileMaker all in one complete amazing uh, bundle with an enhanced version of the CRM. So it's Pretty amazing, to be honest with you. And uh, you can buy that in a one year. If you're looking for the two year deal, you can get that pretty inexpensively. Two year uh, bundle on that. Uh, send us an email or we'll post a link. Margaret will post a link, hopefully. We can talk about uh, that if you have any questions. But this is how you support the channel. We greatly appreciate it. Butterman, a bunch of you have purchased this. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, very, very helpful. It helps us keep the lights on. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize that. Uh, I've, I've popped open our video training player. So one of the things that comes up, and this is where uh, I, I don't, I mean, we can only do an hour here, an hour tomorrow, but really the security topic is many, many hours of conversation in depth, especially if you want in detailed explanation on it. So uh, what you want to do is uh, if you have our training, what you're going to do is you're going to pop open the training file right here in FileMaker. Uh, you're going to come over here. Uh, to select a course, you're going to come down here to FileMaker Platform 2021, um, which is basically the Pro 19, which is still called 19. Don't ask me why. Um, and so over here, you have the various topics. And then under each topic are the videos under the topic. So it's kind of, you know, kind of this uh, hierarchical thing. So if you come down here to security, these are the security videos. These videos are great. They're fantastic. If you're starting from scratch, you're, you're really trying to learn security in the FileMaker Platform, this is a great place to start. Now, we're going to kind of verbally, the benefit of doing this live with us is that you get to ask questions and we're going to answer those questions for you in flight. So this is like if you were flying over, uh, taking an airline flight and everyone could call up to the front cockpit and to the pilot and say, hey, pilot, where are we at? And can you make a left turn here and show us more about the Grand Canyon or we're over the Eiffel Tower or we're in Paris, right? We have an option for that, right? So you could call up and the pilot, that's me up here driving, the, pilot, the plane, I'm going to be able to adjust what we're doing and answer your questions in flight would be really great. So I'm happy to do that. So a relevant prior video, I want to bring this up briefly here real quick. Margaret's already popped it up, uh, but there is a video where we talk about one of the main topics here. So I, I mean, I'll let me get to that in a little bit, but so let's talk about today's broadcast. So today's broadcast, this is the, pro, the uh, progression of learning, P-O, uh, P-O-L. And we talk about that at great length in the book, right? So we talk about the progression of learning and how people learn the FileMaker platform. And I think, I don't know that it's really super specific to FileMaker. We see it in FileMaker quite a bit. I think in other systems it would be a little different, but generally 
you have brand new users, brand new developers who do what they do. You have business owners over here who don't particularly care what happens as long as they can, uh, they don't lose money, they make money, things are more efficient, and they're not exposed to danger because someone didn't put a password in or something like that. Brand new developers are just trying to make the software work at all, right? Which is kind of an interesting uh, topic, right? Just trying to get, get it to work at all. Not that it works the best way, just that it works at all. And then an intermediate developer is where you start to optimize. A lot of you are actually here. You may have been using FileMaker for a long time, but you kind of get this intermediate spot and you kind of stop and you're learning. And, and I'm not in any way picking on you. It's a very comfortable place to be. You can do a lot by being an intermediate developer. So this is basically learning a low code platform, doing pretty advanced stuff with the low code platform. And then you start to integrate some what we call pro code or professional code level kind of skills to really expand the platform. So we're not really talking about this today at all. A lot of you are at this level. The Kyles of the world, I think the Oregon Deans of the world, clearly Jacob, uh, I'm not sure where Scott came, where you fall, fall. A lot of you, I don't want to pick on you at all and, and me, me misguess and offend you. So, but you yourselves know, like for example, I've met people who've done FileMaker, they come to me, I've done FileMaker for 20 years. And okay, and, and, but they are basically parked at this intermediate level. They never really move beyond that. And so Margaret actually wrote part of the book on this. And, and she said that you don't automatically level up to being a, a senior engineer just because you've been doing it for 20 years. You have to keep growing your skill set. So our conversation today is this area right in between here as you start in here between inter, uh, brand new and intermediate, and then you kind of go through intermediate. So kind of a from here to about right here. So from before intermediate to after intermediate is the area that we're going to talk about. Because when you're brand new, you don't care about security. All you want it to do is get it to work. You put some numbers in, you put a math, you put some math in, you have an invoice in there. All you want is it to work correctly. Then you want to print it and have it print nice. It'd be beautiful. And then you want to make a PDF. All kind of largely kind of basic -y kind of skills. Um, the PDF's not so much, it's a little more intermediate, but you get the idea. And then someone, the trick is, here's the progression of learning. Someone says, oh, Kyle, that's so amazing. Oh, Kyle, I have to have that. And then Kyle goes, yes, and I am awesome. All right, he does that. And then what happens is that people say, Kyle goes, well, I can share it with you. I'll put it on my server. So then you put it on the server. And then you realize that you need a password. So Kyle puts a password on it, right? So the idea is that you have to put a password on it. And people put a password on their FileMaker file. And that's what we want to kind of get to and talk about today, starting that process. So Jonathan is there. Jonathan Ray, are you there with us today? Also, Jacob Taylor, if we have server questions about security, we're going to bring these guys in. Jonathan Ray, are you there? You want to briefly show your smiley face so we can see you? Are you yep, there? Yep, I'm here. All right, show Jay's smiley face. This is Jonathan Ray, one of our senior engineers, been around for a while. He is, frankly, fantastic, like uh, like uh, like Jacob Taylor's fantastic, great people. So he, he's going to be kind of color commentator. We're going to talk about this today, um, talk about the FileMaker platform, and talk about the security. So what I want to do is start with a brand new file. So Jay, you don't have, you can quit sharing yourself just for the moment. Uh, what I'm going to do is pop a brand new FileMaker file. Yeah. So when you have a brand new FileMaker file, you go to File, you go down to Manage, you go to Security. There's no keyboard shortcut for this. You pop it up. These are the default settings that you get out of FileMaker, right? This is all testable. What you see on screen right now is testable. It's a brand new file. What can you do? What is an account? So let me go to Help. So let me talk about by going here. So once again, if you have the FileMaker training, we go through this animated in great detail. You cannot ask questions, but we, uh, we will... Uh, so once again, I'm going to point this out uh, here. If you have the paid training, if you don't have the paid training, go get it. Uh, but you can go to FileMaker. You come down the FileMaker 2021 Pro 19. You go down to security right here. And so we talk about all this in great detail. But once again, questions and answers today. So um, what I want to do is you're in FileMaker. You go to help. You go to FileMaker Pro help. You It pops up a browser. You do a search for security. And I want to point this out because this is kind of a helpful area uh, to start. You see some basic definitions over here, right? So managing security, right? Uh, and this is it, account. Account authenticates users who are attempting to open a protected file. Basically, this is the username and password, okay? Um, and what do people do, Jonathan? You wanted to talk about this. We, we had a meeting a little bit ago talking about, you know, planning meeting, what we're going to do. And Jonathan brought this up. So, Jonathan, this is your big chance. Here you go. Go for it. Yeah. So we're talking about best practices, really. So it's 
a there's a big difference between what you can do and what you should do. What accounts were designed for uh, is to allow one account for one user. So you have John Smith is say one account and he has full access. Now let's say Sally Jones has an account, she has full access. Then we have this other person and we might not want to give them the same level of access. Sometimes we refer to it as God mode where you can do anything in the whole file that you want. And say you have a person just, you know, is an intern in the office, you don't want to give them total control of your database. Uh, so you assign them a different level access. You don't want them modifying the financials in your database or something. And so having one account per user is best practice. You know who changed what record, who created what record, and it allows you to uh, do some troubleshooting and uh, management that way. So that's, that's kind of the, the overview. We have an account, which should be a person. Now, a lot of times people will say, like, when you're brand new and you're building a FileMaker file and you're getting it working, you'll have an account, one username, password. It allows you to log into everything, and you share it with everyone in the office, all five or six, ten people who are using this the first time, or three people, right? That's how it always starts. The road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? And so uh, <laughs> and so what happens is, is everyone shares the same username and password, but then you want to differentiate, and that's what Jonathan's talking about, differentiating between what a permanent, full-time staff who's been there for 20 years can do versus what the intern can do, right? Um, and so the way you do that is with a role, an R-O-L-E role. The role that they, they, they have in the company um, are, are they a, a management role? They're a tech support person. They're a database tech, technology person, right? If like if um, our our people from Wisconsin are not here right now, but if if uh, Megan was there, Jake was there, the Sheelys were there, then there would be a conversation because Amy comes in, she owns the company. You got Jake, who's her son, who's very busy doing stuff, and they have Megan, who they hired, and so they probably have different levels of credentials. They should, right? So you want to adjust the role. Claris doesn't call it a role, R-O-L-E. They call it a privilege set. So a role is a position in the job. That role comes with a privilege set. Does that make sense? So you you are so so the Claris calls it a privilege set, and that's what this is. So you can customize privilege sets. Initially, the defaults in the system are you have two types of accounts. Remember, we started we start off with two types of accounts. You come with three roles: full access or God God mode, if you want to call it that. Um, then there is data entry only, which basically allows you to use the database fully, completely, but you can't do development. And then you have read-only access, which is even more restrictive. And of course, then you can customize and build your own privilege sets, right? Um, Jonathan, are you prepared to show that or demo, build a privilege set and talk about that a little bit? Do you want to do that a little bit on your end? We can, we can if we want to. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and pop that open on your screen. David Angel, you can create calculated privileges at that level. They are there. Um, kind of crazy, but yeah. Jonathan, why don't you go ahead and create a custom privilege set, right? Sure. Okay. So let's start at square one here. We're going to file. We're going to, where is it? <laughs> Manage and then security. Okay. And then from here, all right, so here is our accounts. Um, what we want to do is hit advanced settings and now we get our privilege sets. So in accounts, you're creating users. You know, usually you name them um, the person's name, which is, that's best practice in my mind because when you create or modify records, then that person's name can show up on the metadata of the record instead of some weird or uh, ambiguous name like admin or power user or something. Okay, so if we want to create a privilege set, uh, we again have the three default ones that come with every new file that you create, full access, data entry, and then read only. Okay, and let's just take a look at uh, a couple of these and show you the default settings. Full access does give you the ability to create, edit, delete, and all tables. You can modify any layout, anything that you see there, uh, and so forth but it doesn't have all of these check boxes checked, okay? So full access isn't full access unless you 
check off all of these uh, check boxes. You don't want to check all of them off, only the ones that you are actually going to use. So if you're not using WebDirect, um, then you don't have this checked. Uh, turning it on um, without needing it is a potential security risk for some of these things. If you're allowing um, access to say um, ActiveX, which is um, JavaScript, and if you aren't using any JavaScript or any web viewers at all, then don't check this anyways. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel out of here. We're gonna create a brand new privilege set. Go here, privilege set. And let's just call this um, read, write, no delete, okay? Or is data entry access, oh, data entry does allow you to delete. So read, write, and well, we, we need something here that's a little bit different than what isn't given in the default. So I don't know, um, maybe call it power user. Yeah. Where we're going to give them access to uh, create, edit, and delete in all tables, and then also give them, say, a couple of, uh, they can also edit layouts, but not scripts. I mean, I don't know how, um, what we want to do here. Wait, Jonathan, why don't we make it a finance user? Call it a finance user, and they, okay, can, answer, finance they, user. Can, answer, they can access financial layout. So we'll pick a layout that is okay. finance specific. Let's go through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, okay. so well, we'll give them uh, all uh, view only on the value list, okay. all executable on okay. the scripts, Okay. right? Um, but on the layouts, let's say we don't want them to have access to anything but the financial layouts. And so we come here to custom privileges for layouts, and it gives us this list. It says, okay, what do you want them to have access to? And so let's click on, say, the contact details, and we come here and we say we want them to – Yes, we do want them to be able to view this um, and be able to modify the records on it. But on this one, we don't want them to have any access to this layout. If they try to go to the layout, it'll say, you know, it, it just won't let them. We'll show you what that does in a second. But that's exactly what you want to do. So you can get very uh, granular with this, very specific to what they can and can't do. The same is true with records. So let, let's just go in here and do a custom uh, custom privileges too. So in contacts, let's say, you know, this is an odd example because we don't have a financial. Well, you want to create one real uh, quick? You want to jump out here. and create a financial real quick, Jay? Might be easier yeah, that sure. way. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so we're going to come here and I'm going to define a new table and we're going to call it, say, invoices, right? Create. Okay, and we're not going to create any custom fields. Just having the table is uh, is good enough for right now. And we come here, File, Manage Security. And into our privilege set. See, it was saved here. So in our financial user, we come here to Records, Custom Privileges. And uh, in Invoices, we're gonna say, yes, we want them to be able to view these records, edit them, create them, delete them. We want them to have all the access they need to invoices, but everything else, um, we don't want them to even be able to see. We don't want them to be able to view them. We don't want them uh, to be able to create them. And we definitely don't want them to uh, delete them. None. So it's very, very restricted uh, if they try to edit anything but the area that concerns them. And then that's it. Um, so you can get uh, even more detailed than that, and you can come in here and let's say you only want to give them access to certain fields within the financial uh, table. So you can come here to field access and say, I don't actually want them to give, you know, I don't want to give them carte blanche access to all invoice fields. 
but I want to limit them to all but one of them, okay? Uh, you can say, these are all modifiable, but this one is view only. You don't want them changing the primary key field or whatever. So you can see here, we can do a whole lot. It's very powerful with the built-in tools that FileMaker has instead of create, trying to create your own tools to manage this, doing it from the built-in uh, security system within FileMaker is the way to go. Uh, this gets into a really important, and, we'll, and we're going to do some more demos here, but this gets into some, you know, if you have questions along the way, but it gets into a kind of conversation here. We talk about this in a... Uh, a video, uh, and Margaret, do you have that video? It was a, it was a video that we had here. Let me see if I can go to Discord real quick and find that. Uh, we're spending a lot of time talking about implementation of FileMaker-based security, and this is a very important takeaway. All of you, this is now an advanced topic here as well. FileMaker-based security, which is what Jonathan was just demonstrating, versus workflow-based security, where you kind of roll your own because it's easier to manage. FileMaker has a lot of flexibility in what it does. It, be, can, it can be kind of unwieldy to manage it. And in this video, we talk about this idea that if you're trying to get people in your organization to follow a process, a workflow, and you want them to not be hampered by burdensome security, like every time they get to a screen, they enter a password or do something like that, if you make security too burdensome, too hard, they won't do it, they'll skip it, they won't even use your FileMaker solution. So the downside is to over making life difficult for people is that they won't use it. But you need to secure it, right? So the question is, is where is the appropriate level of security? And we make that case in this video very clearly, but there's times where um, and there's kind of this conversation going around. I might bring Jacob in here in a second to, to elaborate because I, I can't read eight paragraphs of text while it's flying by the screen over here. But as on Discord, there's a conversation. But the idea is that if you have external threats or people are motivated to steal because there is money involved, there's some sort of tangible financial benefit to them involved, you need to use the FileMaker-based security, the security we just demonstrated. Now, the flip side of that is you can do your own limited level workflow-based security. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that real quick, give you an idea of what that looks like. And the workflow-based security, I have a sample file here. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. Um, so this is this sample here. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to pop open another sample file. And this is another uh, demo that... Uh, that we're going to give away and show you. If I'm in FileMaker and I create a new record, right? And so I can put in my title, you know, manager. I can click in here. Oh, there we go. It's a top popover. I go to Richard. I go Carlton, something like this. And you want to be able to somehow force people to easily manage this, manage the workflow. Enter the information, but then after a certain criteria is reached, the record is locked. You can do this in the FileMaker-based security dialogues that we saw a second ago, the, the dialogues that are over here, manage security, right? Um, but it can be burdensome to go down that road and to do that. From your perspective, it's a lot of work. Whereas if you're over here, you could maybe create a checkbox, and then as soon as you click in here, you can't edit anymore. So this is workflow-based security. What's happening? Well, there's a script trigger on this layout right here. And, and so what happens is, is that what it does, every time I click in that field, before it lets me go in there and edit, it runs a script, and the script checks to see if this checkbox is checked. It's very simple. Now, this is good for security for workflow, like making sure that people kind of follow the process and make sure you check this box and then get this signature and, and follow the organizational workflow. However, if you're a devious security person, right? Like a lot of the senior people here, probably half the people in the Discord live stream could do this, is find a way to bypass this, right? If you give people a big financial incentive to cheat, you're gonna run the risk that they're gonna do that. And so, you know, this is like a people always say locks or are, are put they put people put locks on doors for, to keep the honest people out of your house. So why do you lock your house to keep honest people out of your house, right? That's kind of like rolling your own security. That's what this is. This is to keep honest people on, uh, honest, right? But if there's a big financial incentive, like I really really want to get in here and change this, and it won't let me, 
there's a way to bypass when you roll your own security. If you're using security based upon scripts, it can be broken 99% of the time. And I don't want to get into the 1% time when you can protect against that. But 99% of the time, people can get around it. Someone smarter than you. There's always, there's always someone smarter than you around, I guarantee. And that person is dangerous. And you don't want to give them incentive to do something bad. I think it's a very important concept. So this other video, we talk about work level, workflow security versus like file bad guy security, right? So we're kind of talking about the built-in FileMaker security, which to my knowledge is unbreakable. It's unbreakable. When implemented correctly, it's unbreakable before you guys start saying, well, what about this? And what about this? I'm happy to address that, but understand that as a general rule, if you go in here under manage and you set security up here and you restrict people in this area is generally pretty much unbreakable pretty much unbreakable however if you roll your own little like well before i can click in here it's going to run this script over here and the script is going to run is a script over here saying wow you know can i come in here is it locked is it not locked can i let people in you can bypass this you can bypass you can do a number, number of things to bypass and get around it so it's the appropriate level of security for what you have in the system, what you're trying to protect. Are you trying to protect, uh, the analogy I always like, it's like it, it, someone has like a box of Girl Scout cookies, right? And, and then are you, gonna, are, you gonna, are you gonna put those Girl Scout cookies in the bank security deposit box with a pit bull attached to it, right? Those Girl Scout cookies are valuable. Okay, well, there may be five bucks for a box or whatever the hell the, your Girl Scouts charge for that. Are you going to put a $5 bill in a safety deposit box in a bank behind guards with a pit bull attached to it? No, it's too much security for, for and no one would want to eat it. So you would say, please you eat these Girl Scout cookies. You're like, man, I don't want to go to the bank. I don't want to get the key. I don't want to get the safety deposit box. I don't want to have to make nice with the pit bull dog who might want to bite me. Too much security. So you have to have the right level of security for what you're trying to protect. Is there medical records in here? Oh, you better dial up the pit bull security level, right? Is there Girl Scout cookies or maybe the last time you washed the car or you did some maintenance on something, right? So you're doing, say you have a service fleet of vehicles and you're maintaining it. The last, last time I changed the oil on the Sir, the service van number 55 you have 100 vehicles last time i changed the oil on number 55 okay i hate to break it to you no one gives a sh okay can i help you with that right i'm being very frank with you no one cares no one cares that about that data because there's no financial incentive in there to hack it break it steal it change it now you want to put some level of security in there but you don't have to put it it's like a girl scout cookie no one cares now if i go in there and i put Tom Cruise's medical records along with Britney Spears and I know that I know I know the there are newspapers and, and the paparazzi would pay twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to get the medical records of a Hollywood or politician, a Hollywood star or politician. Fifty thousand mm, dollars, that's motivation. That's motivation. There are people in jail who have done stuff like that, right? Literally. Jonathan Ray, I kinda hit this a little bit, the idea of the appropriate security for the danger level, right? Or for what you're trying to protect, right? Right, right. And there, there's just a million little scenarios and little tricks and things that we can show you within this security, with, within the, the, under the umbrella of security altogether. So and we can maybe show um, what it looks like if we log in as this user yeah. uh, after all these changes uh, take place. Would you like to do that? Yes, please. Okay. So we've saved this, uh, this privilege set, but now we have to actually create a user with that privilege set. So we'll go new and I'll type my name in here and then we'll give it a super strong password. <laughs> uh, and then set password and then set it to our new privilege set. This is the, the big key. Now notice you, you should never do this. You should never have a file that's just uh, admin and with no password at all. So, um, you know, once, don't do this at once, home. Once you but... give it a password for now, because it'll auto enter without okay. that. So, yeah. Yeah, so Agent Chevy has a question about where you're about to go. He, 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 he says that he's annoyed by the display when you enter a restricted area. Basically, it's a restricted record or a restricted mm -hmm. layout, right? 
it's kind of yep. obnoxious and we're going to see that right here and there is a way to test for that right so yep and uh, where is my thing here it is okay so okay now i'm the finance user right and in contact details what it did here i don't have access to this layout but because it's my um, default layout option in the file uh, a file can have a take me to this layout on startup option and this is the layout here but you can see if i don't have access to this layout you'll just have no access no access on everything and if i try to create a record it's all grayed out i literally can't do anything at all if i come over here to um well, and it's not even. You're not. I'm you totally can, you, locked yeah, out. Yeah, you've totally locked yourself out, right? You're <laughs> totally, totally locked out. Well, it, um, yeah. Oh, 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 oh hold. Here. Okay, before you, don't, 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 just leave it here for a second. This is the sc other screen that mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that Chevy is talking about. He's trapped. Exactly. That's that's in mm -hmm. this screen right here is super obnoxious, right? Right. So that's where we want to work. We 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 can test for this. I think the important point here. Um, uh, the important point here, let me bring myself back up here real quick, is that even though we lock out a record, we lock out a layout, it doesn't keep us from navigating to that with the user. The user can navigate to there manually, probably, and um, and we can, with a script, be, with lazy scripting, navigate them there, and then they see this. It's a mess. So you want to be able to trap for that, right? You have to be able to see if you can have access to that layout. It's one of the things that you can try to do. But yeah, go ahead, Jet. Jonathan, if yeah. you want to so, so what we would do, because now we found out, hey, we try, we went way overboard, right, in our, in our attempts to lock this person out. There's a couple of things we want to do. One, um, you can see here this, these other tables we would locked them out on. Uh, the contact list, it should have allowed us to take them there, um, but it didn't. Um, you, would you like me to create a... Um, a little thing in, the, in a well, startup script and show well, them how to take take yeah, them somewhere. Yeah, why don't? Well, I mean, didn't you create a finance thing? I thought you created a finance section. Was that or was that a different thing that you did? Um, yeah, we did invoices, right? Okay. Yeah. But it wasn't in the drop down. Yeah, list, you have to add is, it to the. It's hidden. Now you have to go to manage layouts and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and add it. Yeah, there. and so it was on, and so I'm kind of confused why it didn't show that. Mm -hmm. Kind of weird. Probably some little feature in there, right? So once again, this is kind of yeah. the what you want to do is based upon. Yeah, go to startup script. There's probably a listen. This one deals with a dozen different ways to solve this problem. Change your startup script, right? And mm -hmm. what you want to do is you can do a trap for the privilege set, right? Can't you do that that way too, right? Trap for the privilege set. Yes, that's what we're gonna do. Um, okay, so we're gonna first uh, create a script called startup okay and then what we're going to do right away is if get count privilege set name equals finance user is the one we want to track for then go to this layout else we'll go to this other layout here and you can have all sorts of uh different privilege sets in here. If it's the um, intern, then go to this layout. If it's the data entry only person, then go to this layout. And then on that layout, you don't have any buttons that would take them to places they shouldn't be getting into or you Correct. hide those buttons, yes. et cetera. Okay, so now we come here and on our file options, we set this on first window yeah first window open to the startup script okay now when we log in again i'm going to close this and log in as the finance user okay sign in <laughs> it says no access okay let's uh we did something wrong so let's, let's okay so i'm gonna let you fix out. this real quick but i want to i want to point yeah. something out go ahead and keep going you're on your end what i'm gonna do i'm gonna zoom out here this is so what we're doing here is called pain painful and so let me talk about this briefly i'm gonna widen myself out i'm gonna grab the camera over here real quick so here we go so here's what oh, i want to do it. okay hang on you show <laughs> it to me in a second but what i want to show you everyone so here yeah. i am 
Let me see if I can do this without like making too big of a mess. Hang on, everyone, don't get sick. I'm gonna flip you through the internet. You're now traveling through wires to the internet. All right, here we go. So this is Richard, other Richard, okay? So when you're building a solution, and Kyle can tell you this, this is my broadcast studio, but when you're in building a solution, you should do the same thing. This is say like your testing machine right here. So this is your test machine right here. You can see all that, that's your test machine. And you're gonna log on to FileMaker and you're gonna test here. Over here on this double machine over here, you're logged on and you're making the security changes and you save them. So you have two machines. One you're doing development work on and you're testing it right here. You want to test. Then over here on this one, you or correction, you want to code it and set it up here, then test on one. So you, you, you don't have to log in and out. Like his problem is he's logging in and out. Log in, log out, log in, log out, log in. You're going to vomit, get sick, throw up. It's horrible. So what you want to do is be building on one, even if it's like a laptop or something. You want something over here. And then you come over here and you're going to test it. So you're like, oh, it didn't work. So instead of instead of logging out here, logging back in and flipping back and forth, which is so painful, you're going to want to come over here, make the change over here, then transition back and test it. Because it'll, the updates, when you save the change here on, and you're, we're, using, we're using FileMaker Server for development, thank you very much. Um, you're going to save it. You're going to commit the change here. It instantly shows up over here and you can verify. So instead of this painful back and forth and you want to like, you want to like just hurt someone. You want to hurt someone. It's so painful. But two computers. And if you really want to be really awesome about it, use one Mac, one Windows machine so you can kind of test between the two. And you could flip roles if you wanted to go the other way. Makes sense? So pretty cool. So sorry about the, the hand waving here. But this is what I explain to people is that as a serious developer, people go to me, I've got a computer and I'm a serious file. I mean, I, so one of the time like, people go, I want to work for you, Richard. Okay, you want to work for me. How many computers do you have? I got one computer. That tells me the person has never done any serious security work or other area of work where they have to establish the security and then test it without wanting to kill someone, right? With a, cause it's so frustrating, right? And so, so as I get the developers, like, I, I always have at least two, if not three, computers on my desk. Jonathan, I mean, when you come here, you bring your laptop. But when you're at home, do you still have one computer or do you have more than one computer, Jay? I have parallels on my machine, and that, ah, that allows me to kind of So you it. switch. Yeah. So you switch back and forth. So Yeah, and the other thing, the neat little trick, is that if you have a file that's hosted on a machine, okay, and you're working with security, um, you can have one copy of FileMaker, say 19, logged in. Uh, to the file with one privilege set and then you have a copy of filemaker 18 let's say uh, connected to the same file with a different privilege set and you can test it that way as long as you're not using features that are going to contradict um, between 19 and 18 uh, usually you don't with security issues and that's another way to do that so Kyle Williams says, I have a MS Surface tablet for Windows testing. I also have a separate Windows laptop I use for desktop. Yeah, so you have more than one computer, right? So that's kind of an important thing, right? So yeah, so Jay, why don't you walk us through your fix on this so we have this, okay. what would you do to make this yeah. work? So we went to File, Manage Security. Here's a, a, a thing that I totally forgot about, and that is when you create a privilege set, okay, and you set your, uh, you set your privilege set, you set your custom privileges. Remember what we did on the layout, okay? Um, before we created this invoices table, we had set uh, these two layout permissions, okay? Mm -hmm. But when we created the new table, it automatically put this here as view only. And so you have to come back in for new layouts and set those as well. And that's something you have to keep track of. So uh, so that's why we created this new invoices table, but then we couldn't view it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to cancel out of here and then re-log in as the finance user. Yeah, I think, I think two computers. And yeah. we're in invoices. So I think two computers, Mark says, I got two computers at work, one Mac, one PC. I consider that kind of the, the basic minimal loadout, Mark. I, I agree with that. I think that's fine. Having You have to have more than one because otherwise you go in circles, right? You just do, right? You can't. <clears throat> There's a million times where you want to do something on one computer and then see how it looks on the other computer, either different security, different operating system, whatever, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, once again, uh, and, and so this is kind of a topic a lot of you 
already know about. So, uh, but a lot of people watch the recording won't will not have seen this, so it's kind of important. Uh, so, um, so we did that. So, how do we tell if we have record? You want to do some record level security uh, in the last ten minutes yeah. or so? Yeah. So right now we have complete control to create records, delete records as this person. We have the ability to uh, come up here and uh, print records, I think. Oh, I guess we don't. Okay, so that, that's one that we only gave them. Um, we, we didn't check this box off that we gave them the ability to print. Yep. Okay, so that's one thing that's grayed out. But all this other stuff we can find, we can show all. Everything is available to us. All right. Let's let's say we don't want them to have that much power, <laughs> and we just want them to be able to create, but we don't want them to be able to delete. And we come here and we log in as we're as the admin again. Okay. Okay. And then file manage security into privilege sets. All right. And you can see here the reason we couldn't print is this is not checked. So we hit printing. Um, if we if we uh, are concerned about uh, them saving, say, all the information to an Excel spreadsheet or something, then you leave this unchecked. Uh, for instance, some people might be tempted if they're intimidated by the FileMaker database you built to export all the data and start using their own Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> and so you want to turn that off, <laughs> okay? And let's say um, we just want them to be able to edit only, okay? Uh, and then in our records, we'll say that we don't want them to be able to delete, all right? Uh, you can also say, uh, I want them to be able to delete under some sort of condition, you know? Uh, we won't get into that, but anyways, it doesn't just have to be a yes or no. You can say, you can delete if your name is Fred or something, uh, whatever. You can specify some sort of calculation, but this is yeah. good for our purposes. Yeah, the limited means calculation, right, generally, right. what that generally means, yeah, so. Right. And we hit OK. Now we've saved the change, and we'll re-log in. And there we go. Now, um, well, it should allow us to at least create a record. Uh, I guess we can only modify one. Um, oh, really good, Jay. Yeah, so we messed it up again. Uh, but that's the idea. That's where. That's how you get to that place. And as you can see, even live, there's a lot of going back and forth and testing the security. Um, it takes a while. You, you never get it right in the first shot. No, nah, it just never happens. So... I think part of the conversation we wanted to do is kind of cover the basics here. So we have accounts, which are, are basically should be people. We have privilege sets, which are basically roles. If you want to go back to that security dialogue, Jay, we can kind of kind of recap yep. here briefly for people. Um, and so understand, oops, well, you got to close the <laughs> There you go. Yep. Uh, there we go. It gets back in. So understand that everything that we're talking about today is pretty much testable material from the certification test so these are the accounts these are the people you have uh, you have this advanced settings button here um, which is pretty much where everyone mostly hangs out anyway so you have um, over on this other screen over here you had the accounts and then on this screen you have privilege sets which are kind of the roles right and then we do also have this other thing called extended privileges. And I just want to briefly talk about this. This material here is all definitely testable. And it's not only slightly testable, you better really know it. Because there's a, we'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow, but this is where you can attach uh, to a privilege set. Like a go to go and select a privilege set, Jay. And then what you can do is specify um, certain extended privileges that are turned on with that privilege set. So... If you go to, um, well, yeah, that's kind of the other way that you're viewing it that, that one way and then the other way, right? Can you go to privileges? Let's just look at the privilege, like you set up that finance privilege or whatever you did, the finance one, right? So, so we come over here and you have this huge box down here. Now you can add, 
And maybe we should try doing that. It might be fun sometime. It was one of those things that's almost never used, but you're allowed, I believe, to create your own extended privileges, right? I think that was kind of one of the ideas behind that. Um, Claire's allowed that to happen. Um, but the point was is that you can um, use their built-in ones here to manage access to various areas, web direct, things like that, access uh, to FileMaker, uh, the FileMaker network, which is very misleading. What does this mean? That is on the certification test numerous times, right? This is on the test numerous times. Uh, this one's deprecated. This one, I think, is deprecated. This one's on the test. This one's on the test. Uh, these two, I don't think, are on there. But the point is, is that this stuff is on there big time. So if you're trying to find a way to get through the certification test, you need to know these. And not just know that, oh, they're, like, for example, if I say, uh, you know, um, you know that there's a privilege set that allows you to do network access, right? But do you really have it memorized that it's FM app? Is it because you know you know it's there? You didn't really memorize FM app, and then you get the test, and, and Claris will say on the test something like, "Hey, if you want to enable FileMaker Pro to access uh, uh, a, a privilege set, what should you turn on?" Right? It'll say, and then possible answers will be FM Pro extended privilege called FM Pros, FM app. How about FM client, which would be good as well. They'll put three or four or five of them in there and all the possible answers make, all the wrong answers make more sense than this one. This one is a legacy, legacy one they never changed. But that really is, this is really pro and go, right? And you're like, really, right? And so they'll even do FM iOS or something like that. The things make, yeah, it's, yeah, there's another one, right? And so there's all sorts of trick questions that are in there. And this is, a, this is, it's right. Remember, the, the, the certification test is not like a yes or no. Can you access FileMaker with a Nintendo machine? Yes or no? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right? Um, unless Nintendo has a browser and then you use WebDirect or something, right? But the point is, is that it's not yes or no. It's, it's like, uh, which, you know, A, B, C, D, or E, right? And these are multiple choice. Or they'll say, pick two, which two of these five uh, are true? Or which two of these are false? And it, they have a real way of trying to, to ensure that you actually know it, you're not winging it. I took this, I used to get, and this, I'll leave you with this, um, and it's one of those like self, you know, moments where the, the, un, the unsavoriness comes out. But I, I, I took the, the certification test back before it was called certification test. And I had like the highest score, second highest score in the world for a couple of years on that test. I really hammered that test. It was just like right up my alley, right? Then I took, the, and then they come out with the FileMaker 7. We've redone the test. It's so amazing. We've redone it. I go on, well, I've had the second highest score in the world. What possibly could go wrong? I go on the test and I flunked the 7 test the first time. And I was stunned. I was stunned. They were asking, you know, was it, you know, because the first test they had back in the old days was really kind of subjective, like, you know, best way of taking care of a customer and good relationship management and all this other kind of stuff that's really important for business, but it's not really super testable, right? Because really, Claris is not in charge of telling you how to run your business. They kind of should encourage good practices, but they really can't, it's not their thing. They can really just test you on FM app or is it called FMIOS or FMNet or whatever it is? So I got destroyed, personally destroyed me. I was like, oh my God, I was horrible. And so for those of you, when you come to, you know, and, and so I've heard stories about some of you, like, you know, the person didn't pass test. Don't let Richard know. I don't want him to think less of me or something, right? Listen, honesty is always good. It's good for the soul because guess what? I've been there. If I hadn't, every stupid thing that most everyone here has done, I've already done it, right? <laughs> right? I've already done it. In fact, I might have done it last week, right? The point is, is to learn from your mistakes and get better at them. Jay, have you ever, have you fa ever failed the certification test? I've met maybe yep. once, once, yep. right? Yep. And then you start to like, like uh, one of you took it. He's not here not too long ago. And he probably got 40 or 50%. 40, 50% is close enough that you should be able to learn some stuff and get a pass on it. You should be able to get through it and get a pass on it. So, um, but yeah, for me, it was uh, trying to cram, you know, an hour before or uh, w one hour the night before. I'm like, oh, you know, I I passed it last time and, you know, not much has changed. And so went over a couple things and just, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, got 
got humbled really quickly uh, the next day, and it, it requires more than an hour of study for the, for the average person, that's for well, sure. Well, I, I think the rub is if you're building FileMaker solutions every day during the business day, um, then you're going to pass it pretty easily. For me, it's it, it becomes more of a struggle each year because I do less and less development every day, right? Because mostly I'm trying to manage like Nick. And so imagine a company, 30, 30 some odd people, you know, and you have people with like Kyle personalities, you got Nick personalities, you got all these different personalities in there. And they're just all, you know, it's just, so um, that's what I do now. So if there was a test on management, I do better on that, but there you go. So, so everyone has their specialty, but if you do FileMaker every day, every day, like Kyle, you do it every day and you're doing stuff and then you listen to what we tell you about, like the fact that they include server stuff and ODBC stuff and stuff like that, you're going to get to a point where you can pass it. You can pass it fairly straightforward and consistently. So if you have questions, send us the questions. If questions, comments, send them to support at RC Consulting before tomorrow, one o'clock. Um, and then we'll let Jay run through some examples tomorrow. Jay, you want to talk about extended privileges tomorrow in more detail? Yes? Sure, sure. Cool. Excellent day. All right, good. All right, that's it for today, everyone. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you tomorrow. Have a good one. Oh, and then Nathan, 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 Nathan. We'll answer your question tomorrow. I promise. All right? More importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Trying to rally down 10. 925 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot to snap. Stands in, throws it left for Amendola. Reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Rolling with an eye. Ball slightly behind him. Again, he makes the grab.